Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. I think I want to throw the hat on, man. My hair is, my hair is just uh, doing what it wants today. Put the curls, put the curls away, put the curls away. But welcome back to another video. Again, if you hear cars going by in, on the road I'm next to a highway, which is kind of funny. I thought when I moved, I'd end up being away from that. We'll see, because I'm, I'm moving around a little bit more. But... Uh, <laughs> other than that welcome back to another video this is the crunch culture conundrum and i'm assuming the crunch culture and conundrum oh that's weird to say the crunch culture conundrum is like crunch time when you're doing a lot of work or something and it's like oh i just got to fit that last 30 minutes in or and then that that snowballs into a way longer time i, I don't know if that's it i think that's it but i'm not sure other than other than all that blue blue aside seriously take destiny in your own hands let's change the world subscribe if you enjoy shout out to noodle subscribe to noodle I've, i don't think i've watched noodle at least on the channel i don't think i've ever seen noodle nah i kind of like what i like for reactions and keeping them, them pure and kind of raw is i like watch content that's like tailored to things that mentally keep me focused outside of youtube but i try not to watch a lot of youtube so when you guys send me videos I have a complete un unbiased, just um, just raw. Never watched before. But anyways, let's hop in. And if you enjoy, like I said, start subscribing because we're taking over the world. And yeah, I don't I don't usually say subscribe, but I gotta start throwing it in now. You know. All right, let's go. The crunch conundrum. I feel like I should switch up my angles, man. All right. Man, let's go, man. You know, the more I learn about video games, the more I'm amazed they even exist. It is really hard to visualize how a game goes from idea to product. But the more I learn... Hang on. It's, it's really odd that I'm watching this now because I was thinking about this yesterday. I was actually literally just thinking about the same exact thing yesterday. Or it was either yesterday or two days ago. I was like, it's actually kind of wild that we have video games. Nonetheless. Learn about what goes on in the average studio, the more I'm beginning to realize that creating a commercially successful video game, indie or AAA, is a stressful, <laughs> expensive, <laughs> time-consuming... In the indie one, they... <laughs> <laughs> they look like they were in a closet. Oh man, indie developers. I love y'all, bro. Y'all are like we are the funnest people to work with. Like and then there's that like middle ground where it's like the indie developers start start looking like a triple A studio and it's starting to grow. But I love you guys, bro, I swear. Exhausting undertaking. Shit comes at a high price. They're not not just financially. Hello, I am Funny Cartoon Man, and today we will be discussing mental health, self-care, workplace abuse, and other fun topics. Quick thing before we get ourselves knee-deep in bullshit, I gotta make a thing clear for those who aren't already aware. Crunch and crunch culture are two very different things. Oh. Crunch is the act of pushing yourself, usually by working very long hours to meet a deadline. Yeah. It's what immediately fo That's what I follows the oh god, oh fuck moment when you realize an assignment is due in two days and you haven't started Oh, yet. you've been procrastinating? It's a feeling of running on five hours of sleep in the last two days, going on your third G Fuel, desperately chipping away at an assignment due that morning that you still don't know whether you're going to finish on time. Yeah. Got that? Okay, cool. Now I want you to hold on to that feeling, but your boss just told you that that's what you and all of your co- Sorry, your family's life is going to be like no. for the next two months. That was great. That was that was great. I don't that it was self-explanatory. I'm not going to repeat the joke, but that okay, was great. have fun. See you on launch day. <laughs> Go team. Crunch culture is where most of the problems come from. It's the idea that what the hell was that? Go team. Crunch culture is where most of the problems come from. It's the idea that regularly staying late, slaving away on a project among your peers is a good thing, actually, and should be expected from those in the field. Those who buy into it would argue, consciously or subconsciously, that it's a rite of passage. That getting stuff done and doing it well isn't just important, 
It's the most important. All that lame-ass work-life balance, mental health shit can go to hell if it means we're delaying Frogger Ancient Shadow. Well-adjusted people don't usually wake up one day and decide to abandon their social life and also 80% of their sleep. Crunch is a result of deadlines, a lack of time needed to comfortably reach them, and a general sentiment that it's okay to burn the candle at both ends. Some would say that this is a bad thing. <sighs> what? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, since you asked, what? I just have all this pubic hair, and I don't know how to get rid of it. Yeah, I really don't like that. I know that. Introducing about you. Manscaped, today's sponsor, and the number one reason I can afford food this month. They have sent me another holiday year box. The all-in-one performance package kit. Wouldn't I am not going to lie. That was such a good manscape plug. You know what? You, you buy a product and they this is, send this you. This is hands the down one of the Look best. Look at all ones. this holiday product. <laughs> Check it out over here. And thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring. Um. This, this is a bit personal. That little figure sitting there kind of looks like a dick, but that's just me. But my friend Ed, who you may know better as Punk Duck, was recently hit Punk by a Duck. car. He suffered some pretty gnarly spleen damage and was stuck in the hospital bed for a long while. At one point, they had to use a catheter since he wasn't able to leave his bed. And since it was taped to the side of his leg, once they finally removed it... Oh my gosh, I was in a car, car accident recently too, man. I'm grateful everyone has their lives, bro. Especially him. I'm grateful he has his life. Holy s damn. Most of his pubic hair wow. came with it, and if he had just used Manscaped, that wouldn't have happened. For a limited time, when you get the performance kit, you also get some stuff. <gasps> oh, I love this dude. I I think I found. I like his humor, a hundred percent. I I love I love anyone that could take a serious situation and flip it. Cause I'm wanting to do that, so that was good. But damn. Stuffers. The travel bag is some little boxer Jesus. briefs. Look at that. Photoshop a horizontal transform over to manscaped.com and slap on code noodle for 20% off and free shipping and presents. Manscaped. Your jingle balls will thank you. That that's on the that is on the script. So uh I prepared a list of words that describe me. Cool, sick, even, woke, funny, shit pile, shit pilled, gamer, intolerant, literate, celibate, sex haver. I'm dead. Based, sellout. I love how they kind of go in order, like if you were forming a sentence. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woke. That would be fucking horrible to describe yourself as. You'll notice. Sex haver and also celebrate. I love it. Game developer yeah. and smart are not on this list. So in I addition to binging see. every article and video on Crunch I could find, I've spoken to a few people who work or worked in the industry. That way it seems like I know what I'm talking about. I know some people have always said the, well, we're not holding a gun to your head excuse, but yeah, you are. My employment is in your hands, and if you don't like that I don't want to crunch, you're going to let me go and I'll be out of a job. This is Chris of the Dead, or, you know, that's his username anyway. I was brought on as the only animator for a season of a show. Oh my god. He's chosen to share his experience under the condition that certain details, such as where he worked, remain undis- I mean, that right away gives it away, which is insane. He was brought on as the only animator for a show. Closed. This is not only because the job market could blacklist him for telling the truth, but because the company he worked for can also sue him if he directly says bad things about them. In most industries, this is standard practice. When crunch is discussed oh, in relation NBA. to a company people actually like, pay attention and you'll notice the white knight neckbeards rushing to the defense of the multi-million dollar company. Yeah, that's it. Paid overtime. Paid overtime under Polish 
work laws, which are much better than the United States. Wow, you're, you're telling me these developers are getting paid to work the same hours as an 18th century coal miner? <laughs> oh, yes, Queen, give us the bare minimum. Ooh, One of the most cheaper. popular arguments used by both morons and PR departments is that nobody's got a gun to their head. They chose to work 80 hours a week. They chose to abandon their social life. This is important because it clearly defines more than a year as a time span of overtime. But as we will underline soon, this happens independent from any requirement. Sometimes there are employees who just stay late at the office or put in those extra hours. With artists and people passionate about their craft, it happens. I distinctly remember mm. somebody telling me early on, you are not expected to crunch. It is not required. And I'm like, cool. And then crunch hit. 12 to 16 hour days, seven days a week for a month straight. That averages out to 100 hours a week, which is like a cartoon number. I can hardly wrap my head around that, but... That wow, bro, that's that's a lot of hours, bro. That's, that's like an hour. Because if you think, what is the average work week? Someone gets like 30 to 40 hours? I, I don't know, I haven't worked much. I've kind of been on my entrepreneur stuff, but um 30 to 40 hours a week right and you double that and that still comes out to 80 or 60 hours and then an additional two dimes that's that is a lot right and i could see and i can see that that was weird that was like i skipped i was and i could see and i could see that but that is weird that that is weird bro that that is seen as a normal thing like i can see the side of like on like a dark side perspective i can see why they would have employees crunching but here's the thing you get a better product regardless if the mental state of the people that are working for you is nurtured and the thing is, is as a boss or like someone that is like asking for employees to crunch, maybe say, bro, it's just like some of these bosses, or if you're the boss or leader of a company, I know sometimes you got to be cutthroat, right? No, see, I don't want to believe that though, because I, I don't want to believe that one, because I've been having conversations with my boys lately about like, well, my one boy that like narcissists a lot of narcissists are some of the leaders of the world and and that's exactly the fucking problem so i don't want to believe that you have to be a cutthroat business person because does anyone sit back and question how we got to this place in the first place like all matrix and jokes and reality getting twisted and warped aside how did it get to this point where there's like companies and corporations like this where it's like that bad and it's like greedy and it's like gotta sell 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 give me your money give me your money like what no <sighs> blows my mind when it comes to this all i want to say so we can get back to the video but this is how i make my videos is that one the easiest thing is if you need to get a game done say i think something like crunch should be like once in a blue moon where you ask your employees to crunch to create that healthy work environment there's got to be there's got to be a gaming i did it again there's got to be a gaming industry or not a game not the gaming industry but a company within development team within a stu studio within <laughs> the gaming industry i think embers adrift i personally worked beside them for a little bit and plan to in the future um that the work environment is really it's indie de developers that's what i'm saying they are are beautiful like i'm telling you a lot of them are beautiful but when it comes to triple a there has to be one that the employees don't complain right or don't aren't like you can't really fit everyone's needs like all the time that's really a personal thing like you can't be responsible for everybody's feelings that's why i say nurture is really hard to say too like you shouldn't have to nurture that's what i'm saying you shouldn't have to this shouldn't have to be a thing brought to the table and i'm sure everybody knows that but like how does a boss not go in with that mindset of like if you were the employee see yourself in the that's what i mean about the cutthroat is they don't they see themselves as the boss 
but to put yourself in the shoes of the employee. And like, and and what sucks is the real point I wanted to talk or make and wanted to talk about was what he said. Like, it's it's these it's these passionate people, or maybe I just came up with this, but I think that's what was said. I'm a little bit tired. Um, you catch these people who are really passionate about their craft in in a cycle like this, and and it, it, it's sad to see, bro, because these people are actually passionate. Yeah. And then yeah, and then they hit, get hit with the NDA, and it's like <laughs> they signed the NDA. First of all, you signed like an, an NDA in the beginning, so yeah, I had a non-disclosure agreement, and it, it paid off though. I knew what I was getting into. I it's sad. This this is sad. You get a better like hands out. You get a better product if everybody's mental state is in a good state, like. I feel like if this is stuff coming from Cyberpunk 2077, devs working a hundred hours. That's like Come on sweatshop now. hours. Yeah. You might be thinking to yourself, but well, if Chris wasn't forced to crunch, why'd he do it anyway? Simple. Coercion. Technically, yeah, yeah Chris didn't have to crunch in the same way I don't technically have to obey my house arrest. It was like, yeah, you're not technically by contract required, required to, crunch, to crunch but they're not going to hire you back if you don't they're going to let your contract yeah. expire and then that'll be it most studios don't technically mandate crunch periods they don't have to over 50 percent of game devs consider crunch expected by their employers last year epic games developers described a culture oh, yeah. of fear or that or that just be transparent look you're gonna crunch if you work for us hope you're ready kind of thing and yeah where overtime wasn't mandated but it was expected. An anonymous employee told Polygon that they averaged 70 hours a week and that somewhere between 50 to 100 people were in the same boat. The company gives us unlimited time off, but it's almost impossible to take the time. If I take time off, the workload falls onto other people and nobody, nobody wants, to be, wants to be that guy. Another anecdote reads, I hardly sleep. I'm grumpy at home. I have no energy to go out. Getting a weekend away from work is a major achievement. If I take Saturday off, I feel guilty. I'm not being forced to work this way, but if I don't, the job won't get done. Oh my gosh, see what I mean? That's such a bad mindset, bro. Like working for the weekend. <sighs> even even the language wordplay, working for the weekend. We work these long hours to get the weekend of the deal. You're weakened by the weekend. Like they know... It's sad. It's scary. And then the whole fact, like, nobody wants to be that guy. I see that. I see that. But, like, is it worth, like, is this, is all of this worth? Because, honestly, the power is with the people. And all it takes is one little, one little rise up from everybody. Say, say this shit was getting too unbearable. And about 50 of you people, like, 50 of the people in the studio, say, over that fortnight, got up and walked out. So we can't be crunching like this, bro. Like, especially if it's a game. This is why I say I don't, I don't get why people don't, don't be like enough is enough. Honestly, there's so much more that I'm, I swear that I'm just not wanting to let on and like say, but I'm trying to tell you who, what, like if I got a kingdom, let's say, let's say Lunar was lost as the kingdom and um. I'm over here. I'm in I'm in Utah with my kingdom. I don't know. I just picked a random place. And I'm good. We got food in the kingdom. We mingle with other kingdoms. You know what? I like the land I have. It's a big space. My people are happy and honestly, I'm content with it, with with what I have. It still would be pretty task like tasking on you. Beside if you get like you know the people like your right hand man, left hand and uh, the other people lower like on your branches not like lower in terms of class but lower in terms of um their position or you know i would even feel weird about saying that but where you can still be you still have to be pretty hard pretty pretty you know pretty like i'm a beast and people shouldn't mess with me but i don't need more you know what i'm saying like it's like 
It's like that. It's like that. People should be like standing up for that. When is enough enough? Fortnite is a top game. It's a, it's a kingdom, right? In free to play games. So we can dial it back on the cr- like you know what I'm saying? It's just that's how I feel. I don't understand where this this mentality comes from that yeah, y'all know what I'm saying. Like but it's just weird to me, man. And this extends outside games. That's why I'm like, the fuck are you rushing for? Games, game, or like, you know, like money, 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 money. Like, you're also like, I feel like you, people don't realize that, but they're also taking dreams away from people. Because like most of these people in this crunch culture, I'm, I'm assuming is re- they're all really passionate people about making this vision come true of, a couple of people or it grew into that you know what i'm saying like the the whole how the idea of fortnite even started and like the belief that went into it but like everybody working on the team is also believing in this vision so give them a chance to also live their dream their dream might be a part of being doing the you know doing the development on the game but then again like don't make that dream a toxic like don't make it a nightmare don't make this dream a nightmare for the person if they're going to be working here for you for years like you got to allow them to go live their life outside that that you know and i don't even like the whole idea or title of work life balance because it shouldn't be work like do y'all get that it shouldn't be work life balance it, like that should be a common sense thing take care of your work life balance but we shouldn't have to coin the term work-life balance. But it is a term, you know, because I get it, language. It's a work-life balance. But, like, it, it's just coining to me that that has to be a thing that we need to know. Like, we need to we need to teach. Like, you shouldn't. The shit is flipped. The whole script is flipped. Hey, don't worry. It gets worse. At Epic <laughs> Games and most of the industry, yeah, it's I standard heard him talking about to fear. hire a core group of employees as well as a larger body of cheaper, less experienced contract workers to do the lower level nice. grunt work. But here's the thing about contract work. In addition to the benefits they probably aren't getting, contractors don't get paid overtime. Oh, They're on a salary, meaning that no matter how many hours they worked, their paycheck's going to look the same at the end of the month either way. Best case scenario? When the game finally ships, it gets a 93 on Metacritic, and they get a little bonus. Hell, maybe they even get offered a permanent position. That way, the next time they're abused, do they actually get paid for it? Wow. Worst case, the contract runs out. Around the same time this article came out, Jason Schreier broke the story of Anthem's troubled development on Kotaku, and... You know, it's bad enough that we developed a shorthand nickname for workplace abuse, but holy shit, does Bioware take the cake? Because during that game's seven-year-long development cycle, another term surfaced. Stress casualty. In Bioware, the term refers to somebody who's, quote, had such a mental breakdown from the stress, they're just gone for a few months. Oh. As Jim Sterling once pointed out, stress casualty isn't actually a new phrase. It's probably been around for over a hundred years. Stress just casualty. Not usually in reference to game developers. It's stress casualty. That sounds like a, a kill. You know how someone says... Uh, like or like a military casualty a casualty they're a casualty a stress casualty bro wow term actually comes from military documentation describing soldiers with early onset fucking ptsd <sighs> they have lost count of how many times this happened in bioware some come back some don't <laughs> This is why I fucking hate when people make the gun to head argument. It's not just wrong, it's actively harmful, and it enables the kind of people who use others' passion against them. Yeah, it ties into yeah. this idea that if you manage to get a job doing what you love, you never work a day in your life, and that the art you create should be reward enough, which is a detached, childish mindset yeah. that only makes sense in a fantasy world where passionate people don't also require work-life balance or money to pay rent and eat food. I gotta assume that the people up top cracking the whip must either not realize or not care that burning the candle at both ends completely drains you of any passion you might have had. A tired, stressed, underpaid, unhappy employee working the same hours as a fucking sweatshop worker is not likely to put out their best work. 
somehow I yeah and, that, and that's what I'm saying like I feel like that's why cyberpunk became what it became but like that's the thing is like that's what I'm saying is how are we gonna sit here and get upset at it bro we we need to change something needs to change someone needs to rise up and speak y'all can appoint me I'll go at these guys all day I need to be a little bit researched so I need to have good sources but that's what I mean is what like nothing's gonna change if there isn't action bro it's action we can't talk i that aggravates me so much about things like not not i'm saying it in a sense of putting myself in the shoes of someone who'd be aggravated same with like protests or something like that i don't really care about any of that shit or any of this shit but i'm saying if like i i care about the people and the souls behind it i don't want people to just be zombies so I care from that aspect, but I'm not really aggravated. But the idea aggravates me that no one comes up with the literal, easy, simple fact that it's like, get up and walk away. And I'm not talking about get up, walk away from the job because this like this may be your passion. Like I said, look, they got to work and eat too. Look, I got to work and eat too. So I get it. I get it. Right. But at the end of the day, if you could rally 30 people walking away from game development or any job that's like yo we need a change you got to be that voice like you have to be that voice where are these people i honestly think it's all a psychological attack on everything because where are the people standing up we need more people that will stand up and be the voice you need you need your best most high performing people who who could have a say at a company say you're putting in the craziest amount of work and sometimes they don't even care about those people but you need them grouping up with the other ones then a little bit of the grunts that feel overworked and y'all need to step away I, 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 like it's it's bro like come on now <laughs> it's just all games if y'all want to be slaves and sleep under a desk i mean do you but I'm going to be that voice of reason when I need to be. And I think more people need to understand that that is within them. So what the hell are we doing? I doubt that someone undergoing a stress casualty feels super motivated. Stress casualty. Feels weird. Like, obviously the people at Bioware want you to play their game, but the cranking 90s feels a little different knowing that the devs are cranking 90 hours a week. Yeah, yeah, it feels, know. yeah, it hits hey, a little check different. Us out. This is Marty O'Donnell's pet goose. I've stolen him for the video. He's mine now. Hey, hey in there. I think that's my goose. Can you give it back, please? Is, hey, uh, Marty. Yeah, uh, looking for the is this goose. playing in the something Yeah, else? I'm just holding on to it him is. for a little. It's not your goose. I don't want no, no, it's okay. It. Don't. It's, it's for the video. So is it like Duck? Marty, for those who aren't aware. Yeah, is the point going to be like Duck, 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 Goose? Is the audio director at Highwire Games and previously Bungie. I want my goose back. He wrote the Flintstones vitamins jingle. Julian. He's been in the industry for more than two decades. I'm talking to you. I want my goose. And he's a big fan of weird, convoluted metaphors. Example. In 2014, Martin O'Donnell gave a talk at the annual Nordic Game Conference. He had much to say, but what we're interested in today is his goose metaphor. Marty? It's, uh, be nice to the goose. What, why do you want we all know how the fairy tale ends. People get greedy and the goose dies. The goose is the people and... Be nice to the goose. Again, again, I say being good or being genuinely kind is what it is. Like a lot, like if you're just someone who's kind, you know that being good comes kind of natural to people. I feel like being nice is manipulative. And the eggs is the games. The Obviously, higher ups don't carve open geese as a hobby, but that doesn't mean that they're treated fairly. People don't want to actually kill the goose, but they don't seem to have a problem kicking it in the kicking stomach. Kicking it in the stomach. When a goose has been kicked in the stomach, it's not probably going to want to lay any more eggs. It doesn't even want to get out of bed. I think I think that like in the actual games industry, you're going to see pretty cohesive sentiments mm -hmm. on it all. But I think that that is very contrary to what the community of gamers, uh, how they feel. That's Alex. He's a co-founder and creative director at Stress Level Zero, an indie game studio responsible for VR games Hover Junkers, Duck Season, and Boneworks. He's also a workaholic. We talked about a lot of stuff over the course of the four hour long interview, but something we kept coming back to is the unpredictability of making a game. 
but you can't really account for everything that could go wrong. Even having the perfect blueprint to follow, there's still so many little gotchas that you don't realize until you're like neck deep in development and the deadline's coming up that turbulence. Game development fucking sucks, man. Say you're making a shooting game and you want to add a cool feature where the reload is different if you emptied a whole clip. There's a good chance you'll be spending more time fixing all the bugs that feature created than you would actually putting the feature in the game. That's actually crazy because, <laughs> yeah, I, I I did hear this. I And you, you see it too with weird things that like all correspond with each other. Wow. It's impossible yeah. to accurately predict, which is a problem whenever you have shareholders and consumers breathing down your neck counting the minutes till launch day. An ex-developer at CD Projekt recently described how when asking management last year what their plan was if they couldn't hit the April 2020 deadline, their response was that they just had to. There was no plan B. Chances are, if you're already now- yeah. Or just delay, like, here's the thing. Oh my gosh, man, we got to this freaking mindset. So crazy. We got to this. Got this. Make them wait. Rather a game come out super good than just bad and employees suffer. Make them wait. Make them wait. Neck deep and crunch like some of CDPR was, the suits don't care how hard it is or how long it'll take. You keep working till it's done. One night I was having dinner with an Activision executive and he said, hey, I've heard about this goose thing. Can you tell me the story about that? And so, you know, I had a couple glasses of wine. I started waxing poetically about the goose and the golden egg. And then he said, well, wow, Marty, that's a really good story. Uh, but, you know, sometimes there's nothing like a good foie gras. Yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. This greed, this, this non, like, you know what gets me though? People will watch this video and go back to their daily life. And that's what happens with a lot. Yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm one of them. Lunar, you're going to do it too. Yeah, you don't think I am? I'm not actively trying to stand up for this. But where I am standing is I'm standing on truth. And the thing is, is truth can be spoken about. But I've never heard anyone say, can truth be acted out? The truth of the matter right now, speaking it. And that, that is a form of acting to earth, acting it out too, because you're speaking the truth. That's the action. You're choosing to speak it out and taking it. And we all know that and then the difference would be the truth of the situation is that this is not good this is not a good mindset for people under someone like this the liver of foie gras foie gras foie gras the liver of that actually sounds like almost like a certain language foie gras but foie gras hmm. the liver of a cooked goose it's that king mentality i thought i I'm, i was talking about if this is your leader, it's not good, bro. It's not good. That's the truth of the situation. Now, I could have worded it a little bit different, but just lately I feel like it's always been this thing about truth and the truth of what needs to be done is to standing up, like, to, like standing these people up, bro. Like when you have a girl that you like and you really want to get her and you're being a try weird persistent guy with it and she doesn't want you to persist and it's just starting to get weird and she stood stand you up I, I don't know if it's the same thing i think the stood up thing I, yeah i think the stood up thing is more like you're about to go on a date and right is it like the date we i don't know you get the stand stood up metaphor you get stood up i think that's like when they don't show up i don't know. but the point is is if that's true too these guys are not showing up for the employees, bro. So the truth is the employees need to not show up for them. Treat people how you want to be treated. Reality is an emotional mirror. We need to get these slaves out this freaking mentality. These passionate people need to get together with other passionate motherfuckers, build something grand, 
Like, I think the grounded developers are dope. I don't know if they're AAA, but they need to, these passionate people over here need to find one passionate person from each section of coding or development. And maybe some other people want to follow along, but say they try to get the best group together and go branch off and make their own shit. It's going to be hard, probably, maybe. I guess it's all a matter of perspective, but at least it's better than dealing with foie gras, motherfuckers. It's it's really easy to hear about all of this awful shit and point the finger solely at corporate executives. But I'd be remiss if I didn't also take a moment to focus on everything else that contributes to Crunch in the studio. Starting with the gamers. The, the gaming community puts more pressure on yeah. developers than anyone yeah. realizes there's there's so much pressure to like meet a deadline not from like executives but from the masses like i saw i saw the like one developer posting death threats that he received on twitter about yeah it. Like, i saw that too it's fucking scary you know and like yeah. we are nobodies and had like very few people in comparison wanting our game but i had people that were like livid that i wouldn't give them the time that the game would release like, I don't know what time on that date that we're targeting that the game will go live. And people got violently upset to the point where they're like, how could you possibly call yourself a game developer if you don't know the exact second that this game is going to be available? Imagine working at CD Projekt, working these insane hours, and on top of all that stress, also then getting sent death threats from randos on Twitter who think you aren't working hard enough. There were people out here complaining about how Apex doesn't have as much free content as Fortnite literally a day after an article came out exposing the human cost of that dopamine drip feed. Respawn would later state that the whole reason they were updating the game slower was to avoid the crunch that Epic had embraced. There were real humans out here arguing that crunch makes video games realistic and therefore better. And you know, I want to believe that this is a vocal minority, but this head-ass take kind of popped off! I think it's some kind of cursed blend of entitlement and the lack of knowledge that leads gamers to say so much stupid shit. All the time. That- that is actually- that is actually true. That- that is actually very, very true, and I remember this ninja thing that went down. Well, seeing the work that goes into a game, I watch myself very carefully on what I say, right? And I think I've said some things about games. I think the biggest video I had was Back for Blood versus Left for Dead. Like, cash grabs and things like that, I will never, I will never be on the opposite side of. I'm in the middle, I don't really choose a side, but I will acknowledge the side that looks like, okay, this is obviously no care was really put into trying to change what this game was or like even approve upon the formula they had though i do i but though i do definitely understand that side of what goes into a game so i think i'm very careful in my videos hopefully i'm not being a hypocrite right now but i would i would never get to the level where i'm sending death threats and shit like that it's just that that just alone seems silly because the simple fact that we get to play these crazy ass dope games and I like the games that are sometimes considered whack by other people or just like a waste of time to play or the little cute games you find. I like acknowledge all the work that goes into the art and stuff. So I think that's why I'm <laughs> worked with by developers, but yeah. Like Jesus Christ, but this insane internet noise can have a real effect on how games are marketed, how they're made, and the people behind them. Now. As per the contract, hey, hey, hey! You want to be yeah. foie gras? As per the contract, I am legally required to discuss Halo in every video I make, so I feel like now's a good time to talk about Halo 2, possibly one of the most mismanaged games that's ever shipped. Its development has been described as intense, brutal, like they were going to die, and more. When reflecting on what it was like, Luke Timmons, a veteran Bungie dev, said that it almost killed the entire company. The experience was so overwhelming, so damaging, that it forced Bungie staff to think differently about crunch from then on. As Luke put it, there's a crunch you want to do, and there's a crunch you have to do. In my experience yeah, in work yeah, life, yeah, yeah. some degree of crunch is inevitable. Uh, whether that is passion-driven or mandatory is the real crux of the problem. 
When Alex first told me this a year ago, it really bothered me. So much so that a year later, I felt the need to get Marty's take on it, and... I will agree with that. So let me just say, no game on Earth should ever ship with the Halo 2 crunch, okay? But if you're on a roll, like you're, you're doing something, it's like, yeah, I need to get this out by five. I told everybody it's going to be live five o'clock tomorrow. And you're still working on it the day before. You go, oh my gosh, it'd be so much more fun if I did this other thing. Well, all of a sudden it's 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night and you're still working on it. Well, that's crunch. That's what that is. It's individual creative people saying, I can make this better. I still have a little time. I want to get this in under the wire. Yeah. And this is a big mood. Anybody who makes stuff with deadlines will know exactly what Marty's talking about. But even though self-mandated crunch usually comes from a positive place, that doesn't always mean yeah, it's okay. Yeah, because it can mean it could be detrimental to I your feel, health. I feel like I've... It really could be detrimental to your health. Like, you have to balance that because that... I've been in that. <laughs> yep. Probably removed some years off the end of my life with how hard I've worked at times. Um, and it's not like nobody else did that to me. You know, like you I made the yourself. decision to do that because I felt like I had to for myself. I'm going to be lie. I'm mean? with him. I do, I, but I, I don't have. think that's a good thing. Uh, I think that's kind of an invariably bad thing. I've I don't want to at that. all compare myself to like an athlete because <laughs> we're fucking not. But <laughs> but I mean, like you, you, you have instances like with. You don't have to compare yourself, but you can draw the comparisons of what they do. Like as as hard as an athlete goes in over on this branch, you go hard similarly over here. It's like a firefighter is not a chef, but a firefighter is probably putting in fucking work and hours to get fires done. And, and it and it all depends on multiple things: how popular the cook may be, where the cook is cooking at, where the firefighter is at. Maybe he's in a place where there's not that many fires, or there's a lot of fires. But either way, you can see kind of you can draw the comparisons. But it's not the same thing, but it is for when it comes to a crunch mentality. So don't be ever afraid to do that. That would have been a good, uh, like, a good example. Like how an athlete kicks their ass at the gym. No? You kick your ass at all this dev development. Depending on, I don't know what like side of the development this guy's on. I forgot. Runner. If, if it was even mentioned. You know, who will hit this brick wall where they just cannot go anymore and they just have to stop or break through this wall. And I think it's kind of similar, and it's like, that's probably unhealthy, physically and mentally. Um, I, I I feel you, but there's a, there's a gigantic difference between like a day-long marathon and a two-month-long death march. <laughs> um, At the end of the day, uh, video maybe. games are not more important than your health, man. Yeah. Nothing should take priority above that. That is true. I mean, at least not in our industry of entertainment. Like, unless we're talking about you're in a fucking war, <laughs> then you're, it, it should not, it should not yeah. literally be yeah. your well-being on the line. Yeah. Alex was careful to make clear that he would never force anybody, not even his worst enemy, to endure the kind of crunch that he's put himself through. Yeah. Which is a huge relief, seeing as how he's a creative lead. Oh, he see, yeah, he knows what he's... Yeah, See, he's aware, yeah. But he still feels compelled to do it. He's able to put himself through hell largely in part because he's passionate about what he does. About so what that, he does. That's yeah. why it's called Same. crunch culture. It's literally a culture of workaholism. Cult. This is why I think Luke and Marty both make the dist In the first, bro, I tell you, language is so important. The first four letters of, of culture is cult. Is cult. I'm not saying that, like, it has to be a bad thing, but it has to be acknowledged that cult it's cult like, come on now it's how words work distinction that even crunch that's entirely voluntary has got to be kept in check the way luke put it it can be awesome because you have passionate people who are excited and have cool stuff to work on but you got to be careful people can get so excited that before you know it they're working a ton and getting burned out that distinction he makes that passionate people are excited is a really important note to hit on because us creatives tend to be really bad at the whole self-control thing yeah. It's so easy to just throw everything you have into a project you're jazzed about. But before you know it, you're burnt out, you feel like shit, and you hate everything you worked on. Yep. Some would argue that for management to explicitly seek out super enthusiastic workers is inherently predatory because young passion is easy to exploit. 
Yep. The PR bullshit I hear a lot is like, we're looking for somebody who's extremely passionate about this work. And that's like, yep. okay, you, you want to just exploit them. Here's the thing about that though. In a passion fueled industry, who doesn't want passionate people? It's a double-edged sword. You need people who really care about the work they do because the more they care, the better their work will be. But unless that drive is kept in check, it quickly becomes self-destructive. Yeah. You actually start seeing this. You start seeing them, they're staying later and later and they're like eating at their desk and they're sleeping under their desk and they're doing these crazy things. And then when, if you're in a position of management, you say, look, you got to go home. I want you to go home. I want you to spend the weekend with your kids. Like, this isn't good. You're not, what you're doing is not good for you, which means it's not going to be good for us. So you're not allowed to come in. Sometimes you actually have to say, no, you can't volunteer to crunch anymore. You have to take a break. I feel like Luke and Marty are the kind of people you really want to work for. They're more inclined to pet the goose every so often than they are to... Obviously, this isn't to say that all management that doesn't think exactly nice. like these two are cartoon villains. But when you embrace that culture of crunch rather than keeping it at bay, that's when you get the horror stories. Y yeah. Jason Schreier put it really well when covering Naughty Dog. The studio is open about crunch culture in interviews, and its managers deliberately seek out perfectionists in art, engineering, and all the other disciplines that make games happen. At Naughty Dog, nobody asks the devs to crunch. Nobody has to ask. They'll be there anyway. Wow. Obviously, there are things we could be doing better. <laughs> maybe it's better planning, maybe it's unionization, maybe it's, it's a complete overhaul of existing labor laws, but honestly, I don't know if it's my place to draw those conclusions. I'm not a game developer. I'm funny cartoon man. Hell, I'm not even saying that crunch in and of itself is always bad. I, I mean, it is most of the time. Studies show that it doesn't really work, but I mean, like, if, if we're going off Marty's definition, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Yeah. It's just really easy to take too far. Yeah. But yeah. the only thing I know for certain is that crunch culture is definitely Cult. for sure a bad thing that no one should be okay with. You know, it fucks me up to think about how many people out here are okay with working themselves into the ground, forcing others to do it, or cheerleading for the companies responsible. As long as entertainment is fueled by deadlines and profit, crunch is probably never going to go away entirely. But you know, hearing about how companies like Respawn and Nintendo are out here actively avoiding it, kind of makes me think that maybe, you know, and bear with me here, but maybe everyone should be doing that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There are three things important to making a game. Not dying, shipping, and making money. In that order. And there's a reason why staying alive is first on that list. You know, it might seem obvious. You can't be creative if you're dead, right? But I've seen relationships break up. I've seen people literally go insane because of the pressures. It's just ridiculous. So stay alive, stay healthy. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna keep the goose. It's not yours. Yeah, it's okay. Give I'll, me I'll my goose back. That was cool. I like how I like how he has them like a part of the skit, like at certain points, but still it's like they were actually interviews. That's really, really cool. That's really, really cool. I, I really enjoyed that video. I really enjoyed that video. That was a really good video. I want to give like a whole kind of end ending to it and talk more, but I think I've said most of my points. I honestly think that, yeah, like like I said, like Nintendo and Respawn. I heard really good things from them, and I've seen videos on Respawn and like, um, like I said, grounded to like, yeah, it's just one simple thing. It's just don't like whatever you, wherever you place your attention, it grows, and I feel like there's a lot of attention on crunch culture, and and, and that can that growth can help to actually being solved a bit better. But it's actually easy to just be. But you have to be the change. Like that's the thing. Human beings, you have to be like like we got it. we need people to be to have this shit to change. Like we need to first of all start educating people on how the fuck to not get taken advantage of. Like, come on. It's kinda obvious. But yeah, the young passion it gets exploited. Never like I don't I've never been in that position though where I've had people try. But I'm just new from a young age, man. That's a sign it's time to go. So anyways, much love in Moonlight. I'll see you on the next one.
crunch culture conundrum, everybody. Peace.